Nobody is recording. Somebody's recording now. Thanks. I just started it. Thanks, Amelia. Okay, awesome. So um, we're going to do some multitasking. It's going to be kind of fast and furious. I'm going to actually host the the Twitter chat, so that means I'll be posting the questions. So I'd, I'm not going to try and share this on the screen just in case it causes some technical issues. Um, but I have a Google document open where um, Jane Creighton from Colorado State and Sonia and I have collaborated on some questions for the Twitter chat. And so we've got 10 questions in this um, in this document, and we, I've got them all ready in, to go so that I can just cut and paste them into Twitter uh, when we're ready to start uh, start the questions. So Sonia, if you're listening in. Um, I think I will wait. Have you posted the the Twitter chat tips yet? Oh, here they come. So Sonia right now is posting some tips. This is always a good thing to do if you want, if you're trying to run a Twitter chat. Just to remind people use the hashtag. Um, she should be. She'll post another one here. Now my screen's getting a little loopy here. Um, she uh, posted a tip there about using Tweet Chat like I'm using, or there's some other tools like Twubs.com or chat.io, T-C-H-A-T dot I-O. And then the third tip is the way that we track the conversation is that when we post the questions, we use Q1, Q2, Q3. And then when people answer on Twitter, we ask them to use A1, A2, A3 before their answer so that they, uh, so that we can associate which question they're answering. So I'm going to paste my first, um, my first question in here, and then go ahead and, and tweet. So uh, my tweet just got sent, and uh, as I do that, I'm going to post this first question in the chat here for you to see too, and you guys can answer the question in the chat. And Amelia if you're, is going to uh, summarize uh, our answers from the chat here and sort of represent us as a group uh, on Twitter. So one of the things that you're that you're seeing on on tweet chat here is you see it says two new tweets available. It sort of buffers things um, so that you don't get too much too fast. Um, that can be really if it's a really busy Twitter chat, um, then you, you know pretty soon things are popping in and it's pushing stuff down on your on your screen and um, you can't keep track of the conversation or it's difficult to them to do that. So uh, tweet chat sort of you know, holds them for you a little bit so that they are readable. But every once in a while, you got to pay attention there because you might have three or four tweets that have not been displayed or read. So if you're on the Skype call, obviously you are, you wouldn't be hearing my voice. Um, we posted the, the first question in the chat. So you could answer that question in the chat. And like I said, Amelia um, will, um, will summarize those. If you have questions about the Twitter chat or what's happening. I know I just kind of rattled a whole bunch of stuff at you. Feel free to open your mic or use the use the chat in Skype um, to ask your questions. Slow down, not everybody at once. We're good. So, um, see, so yeah, I was thinking about something. Yeah, so one of the things that we do as well is um, Sonia and Jane and I are in the Google Doc right now, so we have a little bit of a back channel. And actually, using we're using the comments tool in our Google document to just kind of talk to each other and know what's. Uh, so we kind of can keep track of what's going on. We're arranging things. I don't want to be posting uh, the next question before the. Uh, before the conversation is sort of ready for me to post the next question. Um, in this chat, when we do this chat, we assign somebody to be the moderator, and that is that is Sonia. So Sonia is going to summarize everybody's answers on Twitter. So she's going to look at the answers on Twitter and, and post a tweet that kind of says, you know, summary of Q1, you know, here's what people are people are saying. And then once she does that, that'll be my cue to go ahead and, um, and post the next question so we can kind of keep things going. So it looks like several, or at least a few people who are on 
the Skype call are, are also out there on Twitter. Making my job much easier. That's awesome. You don't, yeah, you don't have anything to, to summarize from, from the chat here in Skype. So are you guys overwhelmed by this? Are you, is it, do you have questions or comments? Have you ever participated in a Twitter chat before? No, I sure haven't. Now I'm curious about a whole bunch of things I'm reading about. <laughs> it's a great, this, this particular chat is really great for, um, for getting new ideas for, for uh, tech and, and different program innovations and things like that. Um, so Bob, I'm actually in Twitter, but it doesn't look like it's progressing. Do I need to refresh or something? Uh, yeah, let me let me show you that. So if you are in Twitter, I just got to make sure that I don't miss my cue uh, for, um, for posting the next question, so I'll keep an eye on that. I just need to, I can't see my tabs here. There we go. Um, so here, when you go into Twitter, let's say you wanted to do this on Twitter and monitor on Twitter. When you search on Twitter, one of the things that you'll see, uh, and this is a search for the hashtag EdTechLN, and that hashtag is important. It separates it from just other words. The hashtag is like a keyword. You'll see here it says top, and right next to that it says latest. So top is just giving you like a curated version of the conversation, but if I click latest here, then you should see the latest stuff. But again, you might need to hit your refresh button or something like that to even have this update. That's why using a tool like TweetChat um, uh, can be more helpful because it, it's really designed to keep refreshing like that. The only downfall is you can't put GIFs in the... Uh Tool chat. Right, yeah, images and gifs and that kind of fun stuff um, doesn't work in these in these tools. So I'm going to post the next question because Sonia has posted the summary. There we go. Got that one out there. I'll post it in our chat too in case you want to answer this question in there. There we go. So things are rolling along. This is actually a little bit of a quiet one. The EdTech LN tweet ups have been happening for a while, um, but this summer um, the the Ed Education Technology Network that was funded through eExtension um, was just no longer going to be funded through eExtension, and our leaders uh, left, went on to other opportunities. Um, well. Um, um, Jamie went on to other opportunities. Paul is still at Utah State uh, Extension, um, but they it, it, so the tweet ups ended. Oh, I think the end of the summer, if I remember right. Amelia or Stacy or somebody who's who's tapped into the network. Um, yeah, it was late summer, and then Danae and I did one in like October. Right, so they used to be held twice a month, and it was sort of a regular thing, and there was a bigger crowd. So this is definitely a special one where um, Amelia and I and Stacy and, and Sonia have been kind of promoting it on Twitter. And so the network has caught on. You see Victor there from uh, Oregon State, and um, iSTEM Mart is, um, is Jane Creighton. Uh, she works with STEM things uh, in STEM and 4-H in Colorado and Colorado State. Um, I saw I saw a few other people in here. Uh, Paul McKenzie, I think Paul is at North Carolina State, if my memory serves me right. Um, but it is a relatively quiet chat, so things are kind of slowly bumping along. Our North Dakota people are keeping the conversation going. Well, that's great. Okay, Bob. This is Jody, and this is my first um, Twitter chat I've participated in. So. I'm totally ignorant. There's my disclaimer. How how do you okay, so we knew that this was going on because of the email you sent out. But how are these others participating? How'd they know? Did you just post that take part in this tech Twitter chat at such and such time? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's how most people outside of you guys found out about it was through uh, one of us posting on Twitter. So when you have a hashtag uh, that you use for a conversation, for, for sort of a synchronous conversation like this, especially the more that you use it, it gets used a lot of other times as well. Um, so uh, because we've done so many tweet ups, a network has developed around that hashtag. So I'm going to open up uh, TweetDeck, which is the tool that I use to, to interact with Twitter. Um, I could just go straight to Twitter, it, but this just kind of allows me to organize some stuff here. And so you'll see one of the things that I organize, it's sort of over here on the on the far right, is I have a column over here for hashtag EdTechLN, and that just shows me anytime someone uses that hashtag. So a lot of us use that hashtag to kind of get in touch with the network. Um, so if I get back to before the tweet chat started, you'll see we're just sharing information with each other. Um, it's way over on the right there. I don't know how easy that is for you guys to see, but um, we're just sharing information with each other just in the regular course of our work um, outside of a, a tweet up. And so um, using that hashtag was a great way to promote this, right? Because I know that there are people following, just like I do, there are people following that hashtag, like Victor and Paul and Eric Staffney and, so, and other people like that. Did that answer your question, Jody? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay, good. All right, um, hopefully that answered your question. So that was the main promotion. We didn't do a ton. Oh yeah, Stacy posted in the innovation Facebook group. That's awesome. If you're not a member of that group, feel free to join it. It's been a little bit quiet lately, but if maybe some new blood gets in there, we'll, we'll all pay more attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy and I are tired of talking to each other in there. I shouldn't say that because I don't post that much to it, but. Uh, that was my first post in a while. Yeah. I'll fully admit I wanted to post something a few weeks ago and I couldn't find the group. I'm clearly in too many Facebook groups. <laughs> So I know some of you are trying to keep up with the Twitter chat, um, either through tweet chat or Twitter or whatever. But if you have a que answer to that question, what tools or techniques did you try but fail to adopt, and why? You can put it in the chat in here, or you can open up your microphone and tell us about it if you if you want. If we don't have a conversation in here, it's going to be a lot of watching my screen, which is not super exciting. So really stupid question, but one of my concerns with Twitter is personal versus professional Con contacts and content. Is that a problem, or, or how do you guys who are regulars with this deal with it? I'm, I'm going to leave some space for my fellow Twitter users to jump in. I, I'm talking about this all the time. Can you repeat the question, Becky? I was. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> Just, I mean, I have my NDSU email for work and my Gmail for personal. Facebook, I'll admit, is mostly personal. And with Twitter, it seems more professional, but yet I'll admit the most things I follow right now are personal. So, how do you guys who are regular users of Twitter deal with that? Uh, I guess my Twitter is mostly professional stuff. I do follow a few personal things, um, but I was just going to my, I think I have my, oh, I don't. A lot of people put, like, in their description, thoughts and comments are my own or, um, you know, something similar to that to make that distinction.
Yeah, I'm just trying to keep a track of the chat here. Um, I only sort of was sort of listening to Amelia's response, but um, my <laughs> sorry, Amelia. Um, my uh, yeah, my philosophy on that is, you know, I'm sort of on Twitter. I am pretty much who I am in the office, right? So I don't really have, and some people do, and that's okay. I, I have a friend who, you know, um, has a distinct different personal life than she has uh, in the office and so she chooses to keep like Facebook profiles separate but I'm pretty much on Twitter who I am here every day right so sometimes it's I make weird comments or say things about my family or try and make someone laugh um, but mostly I uh, hopefully I'm talking about work and, and doing work um, at least 25 percent of the time is what I shoot for um, <laughs> so, uh, so that's sort of how I am on Twitter. Is to just, just be a professional. I don't think that you know precludes you from, from, you know, sharing something personal, or as long as you don't kind of cross whatever those imaginary lines are for yourself. So not to throw TJ under the bus, but is it like Facebook, and you're not supposed to have two separate accounts. Sorry, TJ. No, it's not like like Facebook at all. As long as you are using separate email addresses for them, you have as many accounts as you want. Oh, well, that solves that. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for bringing that up, TJ. So I don't think I posted question three in our chat. I actually had to edit it because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't check these for character count. Um, and apparently, uh, at least when I do it in tweet chat, there's a there's a character limit that's that's actually fewer than um, than if I had done it in Twitter. So I should have just jumped in Twitter and posted that question. Um, but if you guys have uh, you know things you want to talk about related to this question, how have you used tech tools to be creative and innovative in your job? And if you want to talk about them in here, or if you're, or maybe if uh, Amelia or or Stacy or I don't know if Carrie's in our in our Skype call or Sonia. If you want to uh, share your answers to that uh, and have a little deeper conversation in in Skype, you're welcome to do that too. Or if you're seeing something on my screen or following the chat uh, somewhere else, and you see uh, Amelia mention working with local engineers, and you want to answer or ask her about that in the Skype call here. You could do that too. So I see Ed Burgess is on here. Ed is kind of an interesting cat. He's from Massachusetts, um, and he's really gotten tapped into sort of the Cooperative Extension Network. He's really interested in it, but he's never worked for a Cooperative Sten Extension. Um, he grows coffee in his house and um, I think raises sheep or goats. I can't remember which one. but um, So it's interesting to see Ed jump into these things. He's usually on them. Like, he seems to be quite a regular. He's definitely got strong opinions about cooperative yeah. extension. So. so there, Sonia has um, posted this, the summary for, for question three. So I'm going to go ahead and, and post question four in here. go and I'll post it in our chat in here too. So Stacy, what kind of things are you using to be more efficient in your job? 
Mm-hmm. Well, so the, the online to-do list was supposed to help keep me connected here at the office and at home. I need to get back to that. So are you using a web-based one or just an Outlook or? Uh, I used a wonder list. Mm. It's good, but I just need to keep it up. <laughs> Use it. Yeah. 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 I like the little uh, ding when you check it off to to do. So that's good, but I just I need to make it a habit. Mm-hmm. Anyone else with stuff to share in this call? The question four is about innovation. What do you think makes something innovative? And since this Tech Coffee Break is brought to you by the innovation team, I think my fellow team members would love to hear what you think makes something innovative. Another call, Jody, to talk about the stuff that is being discussed in the chat, you mean, in the Twitter chat? Yes. I'm seeing things I've never heard of, and I think, like, st like uh, Stacey and Carrie, Carrie, you said you taught that. Um, I forget here. I, I can't see it anymore. Spark. But Spark, you mentioned. Um, I mean, I'd like to know about, about some of those things. Um, I did a, a training for um, a pretty diverse group of um, tourism North Dakota Parks employees, and I had a young man kind of disgusted that I was using PowerPoint. Even though I rarely read PowerPoint slides, I thought, how else could I reach this particular age group that wouldn't be um, put off by PowerPoint? It was funny at that uh, uh, career day, we had several students thank us for not using a PowerPoint. <laughs> and playing a, a game and having them do stuff. Yeah, it, it seems like audiences are more, they, they are wanting more interactive learning and uh, out, out with the PowerPoints, even though, even though I don't necessarily, like I said, don't, I don't use them as a crutch, just more as a supplement, but um, seeing more need for more tools and ways to interact with audience members. Yeah, definitely. Well, I I'll take I think we can take that as a as a request or a suggestion that maybe that was what we can do in January for uh, Tech Coffee Break is to take some of these tools and at least the ones that we know about, uh, share them and maybe some of the other ones just explore together. Awesome. I'm writing it down. Cool. <laughs> that makes it official if Stacy writes it down. Is it on your app though, Stacy? It's gonna go on there. <laughs> All right. Here we go. It's question five posted on Twitter, and I'll post it in here. So question five is, what's the most innovative cooperative extension project you heard about this year? Include a link if you have one. So These are tough think? questions, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Most of them came from Jane and Sonia. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to um, push blame off, but I, my role in this was to create the space for this to happen, and a lot of other people are, did the work, so.
So I'll sh I'll share my story about that if um, uh, since I don't have the mental capacity to balance all of this and type it into Twitter or find the link or anything like that. But um, and this is a this is a low tech one definitely. But um, I talked with some folks from uh, Michigan State University Extension, Julie Dahl and uh, Cheryl Eschenbach um, and James D. Decker, and um, they did a workshop for crop producers on climate change, um, but instead of doing sort of expert model stand up and we'll tell you about climate change, they used an instructional method called the fishbowl method, um, which really puts the participants at the center of having the conversation. Um, so you put some people in the fishbowl, like a little panel of people in the fishbowl, and they have a conversation about um, the topic and everybody else kind of listens, takes notes, reflects, and those kinds of things. So they did this whole workshop where they did series of little fishbowl conversations and what they found, and they have a Joe article about it if you want to look it up, um, you can just look for Julie, uh, Julie Dahl, like Amelia's name, D-O-L-L, and um, uh, on Joe, and they found that they, you know, had better results from that uh, than uh, the sort of expert model. So that was interesting innovation to use an instructional method not really associated necessarily with extension to talk about a tough subject differently. So one of the things I'm doing as host, or trying to keep up with as host and moderator, is that we will try and do some liking and retweeting to kind of amplify uh, people's answers. I see that, that Jamie Sager just uh, crashed the EdTech Helen party. Um, she's no longer with Extension, um, but still cares about the network, and uh, I'm glad that she got to come in here. So I definitely liked uh, Jamie's tweet. What do you guys think? Another, you guys have answers to question five or questions about the Twitter chat or is everybody fiercely trying to follow it? Or are you using my soothing voice uh, to entertain you while you get other work done? <laughs> That's a few things to do, Stacy. I you know. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot coming across the screen. And if somebody if you're if you're watching on my screen and you need me to scroll down or something, you know, feel free, let me know. The other thing I'll mention on here is um especially if you're new to a Twitter chat, if you have a Twitter account and you're following along with this, um I would encourage you to start clicking on some of these people's names, like Eric would be a great one, and you can just click on them, and that'll open up if you're logged in in Tweet Chat in Twitter, and you can click the follow button, and you're building your network, and you know that when you're doing building your network that way, these are people who are interest, you know, who you know share with you that they're in Cooperative Extension, they they care about some of the same things that you care about, and you're not like relying on random you know, suggestions from Twitter on who to follow. All right, so Sonia's got her summary in there, so I'm going to get question six ready to go here. So here we go. So I'll post twist question six in the chat for you guys, see if you have any thoughts about that. What did you do to foster innovation 
foster innovation in your work this year? Stacy, what do you average to do? I'm confused. Sorry, I replied to somebody else and it must have only picked that one. Gotcha. We were talking about um, open rates for online emails. Which, if you want to know, is about 35%. That's higher than my newsletter gets open for 4-H. It's higher than the quote-unquote industry average from MailChimp. So I think, Stacy, you, you're using MailChimp for the one you do too, right? Yep. Yeah. For two of them. So again, I, I'm not going to mess with the screens, but uh, right now Sonia and um, Jane and I are in a conversation about whether to to skip question seven <laughs> because it sounds a little like question two. <laughs> so, so just to give you an idea of what's happening on the back channel as we try and uh, leverage this. So one of the things that I usually do, this is probably why I'm, oh, thanks, Dina. Did you get that in the chat, Amelia? He probably already tweeted it or something. Um, <laughs> that's probably one of the reasons why I'm, like, uncomfortable doing this when you guys are so quiet. Because typically, if I'm doing this, um, I might be multitasking on something else. But if I'm not multitasking, I'm focusing on the Twitter chat, I've got music playing in my headphones, which... Um, yeah, I don't know, adds a, another uh, sort of uh, level to things that, that doesn't make it seem like you're just quietly chatting away. So, um, and every once in a while, people will have will share uh, what music they're listening to while they're while they're doing the Twitter chat, tweet up. No, Amelia? Um, I'll mull it over. Shall we say that? <laughs> okay. All right. I, I it was definitely not boring. <laughs> I was presenting initial findings on my um, thesis research, mm. which can be super lame and boring, but I, I uh, used a bunch of memes. Awesome. Becky said if you have to use PowerPoint, at least keep it interesting. And she went to one that was just black on white. And the first thing that popped into my head was, uh, how did it, how is it worded, Amelia? You said, brace yourself, spreadsheets oh. are coming. <laughs> brace yourself, spreadsheets are coming. It was from uh, Game of Thrones, you know, like the brace yourself, winter's coming meme. I thought it was funny. Oh, my, brace uh. your, I'll find it and I'll share it. <laughs>
so I'm I'm really seriously not wanting to put like something in this as a tweet, but I can't seem to master making a group. So every time I want to, I know, Stacy, don't give me that uh, confused look. It sounds very basic, I know. No, but... I, my contacts were uh, shifting in my eye, and I was trying to get them back. <laughs> okay, I thought you were thinking, this. it sounds like something so easy. I'm trying to set up a group with 14 kids to send a text message, and I can't figure out how to make a group that sticks. So every time I have to go in and enter their phone numbers. Use group me, Dina. Group me? Yeah. So, like, is that an app? Yeah. Well, thanks. That would make my life a lot easier. And and then the, sometimes they say they don't get them. So I feel like this is, like, the most basic of techie things. It's like, why am I struggling with that? In group me, you can see who's read them. Oh, cool. Okay. And so I can set up the group in there, and then it'll work as, like, a contact list in my phone contacts so you set it up and then um they can either download the app which chances are if you're working with kids they already have the app and they just add that group and so then they see it it's like similar to this twitter chat that's going it's just a big string of messages and you can add people I don't know if my tweet chat is behind or if Brad Anderson's like just getting on now and he's answering question one. Um, but that's kind of the crazy stuff that can sometimes happen, which is why the question number answer number protocol is really, um, really helpful. Uh, Sonia, as far as the group me reply all, um, you can individually reply, um, similar to remind me, which would be another option, Dina. I've heard that one I didn't, and I didn't care for it because not everybody bought into it. You know, they okay. didn't all download it, so it didn't work. So with GroupMe, they don't have to download it, but it, you're still going to get a reply all message, but I believe that there's an option to reply individually if you want. Maybe I'll test it out with some of my closest friends, Amelia and Bob and Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yes, I know you can mute a conversation, Sonia, kind of like you can on uh, Facebook chat. <laughs> and add it to the list of tech coffee break. I know, but I do feel like there would be a lot of people who would find that very useful. So, yeah, add that to the list, Stacy. It's already written down. Thanks. <laughs> there, there's my list. So I don't know if I mentioned it, um, I put it in the chat, question seven is how can we provide support for innovators and cooperative extension? And so that's seen some of the answers there. And your guys' comment about uh, PowerPoint really <laughs> has gotten some people um, going. Oops, I hit the wrong button there. So I think this one, yeah, I think I've kind of figured this question about how can we provide support for innovators and cooperative extension would generate a little bit more conversation. Um, so I'm not sure how long this conversation will go on. We've got a couple of, we have two questions in the hopper since I, I, I skipped question seven, um, the original question seven. Um, 
So we kind of try and time things out a little bit to, to be close to an hour, right, on the hour. Um, so if people have scheduled this on their calendars, we, we honor that honor that time. And that all depends on sort of the how much the conversation is going. Sometimes we don't get through all our questions, um, and that's that's got it. You have to be okay with that. <laughs> you can't keep people after or anything like that. So, although some people keep keep the conversation going for for a long time after the hours up too. And a lot of people will go back and re read tweets and reply back to them. My Twitter is usually going off for a solid few hours after it. So I'm actually getting a little bit frustrated about how short these tweets are and how they're getting cut off in in tweet chat. Um, I'm going to pop this open in Twitter here just to kind of so kind of see uh, what that actually looks like. I need to refresh. There you go. So yeah, so that's what uh, I think Amelia was saying about gifts and stuff. It's it's a little bit more of an engaging. Uh, look at things when you have the gifts and images and and full tweets um, than it is in tweet chat. If if I'm tweeting from here, um, then it becomes a little more difficult because I don't have the box right here uh, to to tweet, um, and I have to remember to to add the hashtag. So on, in tweet chat, it was adding the hashtag for me. And if you leave out the hashtag, then you're not part of the conversation. It's like you left the room. Um, some people you're might- You're talking to a wall in the hallway. <laughs> right, well, some people who follow you might see your comment, but they're focused on the on the hashtag. So if you forget the hashtag, yeah, you um, you had your greatest thought of the cocktail party while you were in the bathroom or something, and that's the only time that you- shared it so all right so there's Sonia's summary of question seven so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, post question eight, and I'll post it in the chat here. And it, again, be interested in your guys' responses. And also, if you want to um, talk any more about the Twitter chat, and I'd be curious to see if, well, what do you guys think? Is this like, is it something that you would like to participate in more, or do you have a use case where you're like, hey, maybe we could use this to have this kind of conversation on Twitter and host your own chat? I think it would be kind of a, a neat thing to try around a hot topic where you just like wanted people to vent or would that be frightening? Um, well, some frightening's good. I think frightening's good, eh? but um, <laughs> uh, you do kind of open yourself up to that. There, there are some Twitter chats out there that have had to, um, you know, end up blocking people or something on controversial topics or hot topics. Um, but, you know, that's sometimes when you get the best conversation, too. Yeah, see, Becky, you and I differ. I love gifts. <laughs> Amelia and I have had a complete text conversations with nothing but gifts. <laughs> this is not a lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 
Stacy, you're going to the innovator training? Yep. Awesome. <laughs> and I'm a lot more familiar with Facebook instead of Twitter, but when a friend from high school that I haven't seen in 20 years tells me to repost this if I love my daughter five times in the same night. It's like, no, <laughs> this is worthless. Don't even make me scroll past this crap. You can, we agree, uh, we agree there. People. <laughs> yeah. What? You can unfollow people on oh, Facebook, so you're still their friend. But. <laughs> well, I, I, before I knew about unfollowing, I just unfriended some friends and family. It's like, I don't have time for this, so, yeah. One and could argue if you don't have time to mindlessly scroll on Facebook, do you have time to be on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Say that again? If you don't have time to mindlessly scroll past things you don't like, should, you're, should you be on Facebook? <laughs> hmm... <laughs> That's what Facebook is, I think, is what you're saying, right, Amelia? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, like, some people I, just go overboard with sharing. It's When it gets to the point where it's not personal at all, it's like, yeah, I don't care. Mm-hmm. People, it's just too easy to share, so people hit share and, you know... I don't care if a dog is lost in New Hampshire, obviously, but locally that might be important. Oops, I probably just gave away something there, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> and yes, there are some good things with Twitter and with Facebook. It's just I'm very, very careful with how much I share, and I expect some people to put some thought into theirs, too. And so I don't think some of them do. Okay, I'm waiting for Sonia's summary. Should be coming soon, I think. So we're getting down to the wire. Other questions about Twitter chats, tweet ups? There's... Uh, it's been kind of crazy trying to watch the chat, and then also it's on your screen, and I'm listening to you, and I'm attempting to either type it in or on my phone. So, I assume that other tweet-ups are not as crazy, or you just get used to that. Right. Um... Yeah, well, it this is I would this is not a crazy conversation in terms of the speed or the number of people. I wouldn't say. No. Um, I think it's just the added um, being in the Skype, mm -hmm. trying to talk mm -hmm. through it, having my mm -hmm. screen bothering you. That's definitely unusual. Um, yeah, this was we wanted to do this to kind of give you guys who aren't on Twitter just a, a way to, so that you could observe this and kind of dip your toe in the water. And um, we've done it before. Paul Hill did it um, a while back with the EdTech LN uh, tweet up um, where he hosted a webinar while people, you know, about tweet ups while people were, were watching the, the tweet up. So um, it's, it's definitely been a multitasking challenge for me, that's for sure. Maybe it's just today. Been a long week. <laughs> so, 
So did I post, I didn't post question eight, nine in here, did I? Let me post question nine in here. What in the heck, Amelia? What do you, you have a Pixel 3 now? Awesome. Yeah, it's my Christmas present. <laughs> it's not Christmas. Yeah, well, yeah. my husband said that if I got it, that it would be my Christmas present. We got a Google Home Hub with it, which is awesome because I can read recipes off of it and not have my phone there with all the germs on it, like Julie Garden Robinson sent out. It's a phone, Becky. The new Google phone, the latest Google phone. <laughs> Maybe I suggest, Carrie, you don't go with an iPhone. Yeah, it's a thought. Okay, see you, Becky. Thanks. New iPad? Are they making those, Stacy? No, I need one because the bottom <laughs> of my screen is no longer responsive to touch. So that's helpful. Okay. I know you have to flip it around if you want to. <laughs> so here I am. I'm like turning. It's like you're playing a race car game, but in reality, you're just trying but to. Hit like, a button. do your finances or something. Yeah, hit a button at the bottom of the screen. Like, come on. Yeah. yeah. Don't see very many iPad commercials anymore. No. How about anyone else? Do you have a tech or holiday or innovation item on your list? I kind of want an Apple Watch, but then I hear you guys talk about this whole anti-Apple feeling, and I'm, it's just I feel like you kind of get stuck in it because you have one thing, and then you end up getting another thing that's Apple. You don't yeah, have that's <laughs> <laughs> that's true of it either either platform I think or any any platform. Yeah, and it's I mean at least for me. Um, there's pros and cons of both. It, when we're, we're when I'm making comments like that, it's sort of in fun about it, you know Green Bay Packers or Minnesota Vikings or something. It's basically just fanboys of each or and girls of each uh, platform. I agree. Yeah, it's just I don't know how to get away from it. Once you have certain things that you you know just kind of sync well together, you just kind of end up going with that one do pixel 3 or that that platform the google do their phones cost quite a bit less or is it like selling an arm as well uh the pixel 3 is not cheap but my father-in-law bought a pixel for my mother-in-law for christmas and it was like sub 200 dollars i want to say so it's a few generations old, but they, I haven't heard as many people having problems with older Android phones as they do with older iPod, iPhones, but I've never owned an iPhone, so I can't say too much. Something to think about. So I'm just wrapping things up on the Twitter chat. We actually came out way close on on time, which was awesome, even There's though I lot. skipped a question. Um, so any last thoughts or questions here at all? I can definitely stay on. I'll be I'll be have the tweet, Twitter chat open for a little bit. Like I said, the conversation kind of keeps rolling, so for a little while. Okay. Well, if you do have questions, you want to try a Twitter chat and you want some, some help, Amelia volunteers to assist anybody who wants to do a Twitter chat or... I think that's um, called volunteering. Yeah, I think it is too. Um, 
or or me, I suppose, if Amelia is not available in a pinch, um, I'd be willing to help. So, yeah, uh, let us know. I hope this was helpful to you. The uh, Extension Innovation team wishes you happy holidays, and um, we'll see you at the next Tech Coffee Break in January. Thank you, Bob. Bye, yeah, everyone. Thank you.